Do you suffer from the flying pinky guitar technique problem where keeping your fingers close to the fretboard feels quite difficult even when we are trying to control them and contain them keep them close the fingers just are flying far away and then coming all the way back to play the notes that we want to play and it's not just the pinky but that's kind of the main culprit it tends to really go the furthest away but could be all the fingers as well this is not desirable obviously the definition of good technique is that we are minimizing effort we are minimizing unnecessary movement and we are maximizing energy so we can be intentional so we can be smooth so we can be relaxed so we can be in control i did a video recently on the top five technique mistakes that guitarists make i'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to check it out and after that i got a few questions about how to address this flying fingers off the fretboard issue so that's what today's video is about the solution to this flying pinky problem is actually quite simple and it's exactly what i did many years ago to get my fingers to where they are now which is that just naturally i'm able to play with my fingers very close to the fretboard making everything much more smooth much more light much more easy feeling when i play my energy is a little low right now just a few days ago i tested positive for covid 19 and it has super wiped me out i was really not feeling well the last few days i'm feeling better enough to do a lesson video for you so i'm very glad to be here so in this lesson i'm going to give you the basic exercise that takes care of this flying pinky flying fingers off the fretboard problem i'm going to give you a specific example of what not to do and this is something that a lot of people actually say to do but you should really avoid it and i'll tell you why and then lastly i will tell you what to expect if you want to really get this down if you want it to feel natural how often you should practice it and how long i think it will take roughly for that to become just a, an actual part of your playing so that's what we're going to cover let's get into it i'm jared borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com on this channel i teach on a wide variety of topics including technique and improvisation and jazz and finger style and practice strategies all designed to help us gain more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely if you're new here welcome please subscribe and hit the bell i talk a lot about deliberate practice intentional practice focused practice how to get the most out of our practice time and therefore i think also get the most enjoyment out of it once we realize how these strategies work one of the principles that uh, comes up one of the core principles of this is that we don't want to ever assume that we're going to get a result as a side effect of working on something else we don't want to ever assume that something will someday happen or oh i hope i get better at that by continuing to practice something else so for example if you're practicing a bunch of scales or exercises or anything thinking that oh as i get better in general maybe my fingers will stop flying off the fretboard that is not true it is possible that that can happen sometimes but it's it's not reliable at all so we need to have a solution and i've heard and seen some amazing players that still have their fingers flying off the fretboard and it's not because that's happening it's despite that right they could be even smoother or even more relaxed if they didn't have that going on so this solution is going to be not surprising at all it's going to be very simple it's going to be a an exercise or a warm-up that is uh, relatively common that's just doing one two three four with our fingers up the first four frets up every string from the sixth string to the first string fret one two three four off each string okay with each finger one two three four and then when you get to the top string you move up a half step and then you go down okay but that's not what this is about that's just the vehicle or the vessel that we're using to work on the thing that we're actually working on you could work on this you could work on this pinky flying off the fretboard problem with almost anything this is just what i use and what i recommend and the way i did it for myself so this exercise someone might say hey great technique exercise do this and i do this as a warm-up for sure one of the practice approaches that i talk about a lot too is that we only want to focus on one thing at a time if we're trying to focus on more than one thing at a time we're failing because you can't you're going to rapidly go between the two or just kind of not make progress on something so you want to let some things be imperfect to focus on that one thing so in this case simple enough exercise you're just scooting up a fret every time you go up or down the 
the strings this way, but you're focusing on one thing and one thing only. Once you can play the notes, right? Of course, you got to get down. Can I actually do this? Can, how am I going to pluck it? How am I? You know, that's obvious. Once you're doing it, though, then you focus on with all your focus ability on keeping those fingers straight. Now, this might sound anticlimactic, or keeping the fingers close might sound anticlimactic to say the way you work on this is that you keep your fingers close, but it really is important to to nudge you in this direction because it's not obvious when when we're playing and this is one of the few times where we actually want to intentionally feel some strain and feel some tension where usually we want to be as relaxed as possible and this is a situation where this uh physical conditioning and this build of the muscle here that is going to allow and the control that's going to allow us to have to intentionally hold our fingers closer that's going to cause some strain in the same way that if you're lifting up something heavy and your muscles might get sore so we don't it's it's not really a dangerous technique you shouldn't be squeezing or tensing anywhere else shouldn't be squeezing at all shouldn't be biting your lip shouldn't be putting your shoulder up anything like that what you should feel this is really not not risky and i would tell you i would tell you if it is you're you're feeling you're trying to hold your fingers as close as possible and when you're doing that, you're going to feel it in the back of your hand here. And that is going to strengthen that ability. And if you haven't done this before, it is going to be slow. It should be very slow. Okay. So this focus on one thing at a time thing, if you start thinking about the tone or something else, you might, you know, go back to this. Okay. But we want to, if it has to be this slow, this is how slow I did it when I first worked on this. Okay. And when I'm doing that, this is, like I said, one of the few times where you are kind of tensing at a certain spot for a certain reason. You're not tensing anywhere you don't need to tense, but it's building a muscle. Do I tense there now? No, I got it down so, so now I can do it in a relaxed way. But, okay, so if I do this a little faster and I focus completely on keeping my fingers as close as possible and I have that other angle set up so you can see. And I want you to do it way slower than that until you feel like you can keep them close at whatever speed. Now, if I don't think about it at all, I'm about like, I, I basically, that's how close they are. I'll try to show you this way. You can see the pinky still goes off a little bit about twice as far as the others but it's very very close and then if i really focus on it i can keep them even closer or i can keep the pinky you know even closer what you want to think of as your rule is that you want them to be about a half an inch away from the strings okay not more than half an inch okay that's what you want to to do and so just a little and now i can by forcing myself to do that i can feel it here not in a bad way right just in a because because we're not um you're not doing anything that it's kind of just like flexing your hand like if you just did this a little bit that's kind of what it's like you're just kind of flexing your hand a little bit you're not doing anything you're not like squeeze you're not actually squeezing a weight you know one of those squeeze balls or anything like that so um you, you should just feel that like oh okay i'm using something in a certain way it's a it's a uh, kinesthetic control so that is simply the exercise if that's simply the exercise why make such a big deal about it why aren't people doing it more well we just need to believe in that and do it super super consistently and it will be a game changer just very consistently if this is if the fingers flying off the fretboard if it looks like this when you do it and that might be an exaggeration but it might not be then you will benefit hugely from this but because it's physical conditioning it is not a quick fix it's a slow fix right if you had to go from being able to do one push-up to 100 push-ups how long is that going to take you to get there it would take me a long time right it's not going to take a week now there's something very very important that i want you to not do because it's not going to work it's not going to fix this and it's not going to help in other ways as well and that is that when you do this i do not want you to keep the fingers down don't practice that way okay it's not helpful it's not good it causes more tension we want to be used to lifting off a finger once it's not needed we need we don't want to practice something that is not what we're going to be using uh, in our real 
technique in real music. So when you're holding each finger down, uh, it might feel like, oh, my fingers are staying close now. But when you actually play, you're not, you don't want to hold your fingers down. So why would that translate to once you're actually playing and lifting them off again, they're going to fly way off again. So um, we, you, when we're doing that, you're not using this muscle that we talked about to hold them close. You're just using the string to, to feel, oh, my, my hand is down. Right? It's not the same muscle. It might take some effort in some way, but it's not the same um, exact skill. So you're working, that's that thing. You're working on one skill, hoping something else will happen. That's not the way to go. That's not the way to practice. So I don't want you to practice holding your fingers down. That's not good for how the music sounds when we're actually playing music. We, would, we don't want to do that when we're playing melodies. Uh, we want to lift things off after we, uh, when we don't need them. That's a principle to take with you in, in everything you're practicing, but especially when you're working on this, it's, you're not going to get the result if you hold the notes down as you play them. You want to lift off each time, and every time you lift off, you try to keep it all the fingers as close as possible. About half an inch is what you're going for. And before the last tip, just a quick bonus here. I'm going to do a full video on this in the future. If you want to take it to the next level, you can work on the permutations of the one, two, three, four finger combo. So you can go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then maybe the next section on the, uh, starting on the third fret, you can go one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three, one, two, four, three. And then the reverse of that. And then you'd go one, three, two, four, one, three, two, four, and start doing permutations, different combos, or just choose one or two extra combos if you want to start mixing up the fingers. Um, that can be helpful as well. You'd have to get the order down first, and then once it feels natural, you can work on keeping your fingers very close. It's a warm up. I do a lot doing all those uh, combinations. I'll do a video on that in the future. So it's just physical conditioning. If you do this for a few minutes, every time you practice, when you do it, you are fully focused on that one objective of doing the fingers in a certain order. And then you're just totally focused on keeping the fingers close to the fretboard. You're actually using your hand muscles to keep them closer. And you should be able to feel that in your hand. And when you do that, you're not worried about anything else. If you miss something with your right hand, if there's a buzz, if there's a you know tone issue, you don't sweat any of that because you're practicing just keeping the fingers close. If you do that for a few minutes, uh, every time you practice, I'd give it about six months before it's a natural part of your playing and even your physical memory. And you'll notice results really quickly, but what, even after we get something that we think is down, there's a point where we have it down when we remember to do it and it, we can totally successfully do it. But yet if we forget to kind of turn it on on purpose, it goes out the window and old habits come in. And then there's a point later where it actually is just happening automatically without us having to remember uh, to do it. So that's what we're shooting for. And that's a small price to pay and give or take, right? That six month range, if we're doing it consistently over that time, if for years after that, your technique is clean and close to the fretboard and smooth and lighter and easier and, and all of that to the point where people are going to comment on your technique and, and notice it and say, wow, how is it so controlled. How is it so close to the fretboard? So that's what I recommend if this flying fingers off the fretboard is a problem for you. If you're working on this and you want to test it out on something that is really cool, that's not just that same finger order exercise, definitely download my free PDF that is the top three pentatonic scale patterns, the melodic patterns with the pentatonic scale. They sound super cool, kind of single note lead guitar exercises that break up the scale to make them sound more melodic and less like an up and down scale. It'd be a great thing to test out your uh, how close your fingers are to the fretboard as you're working on this. You can get that with the link at the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash number three patterns. So I'm curious, let me know in the comments, how's this flying pinky flying fingers off the fretboard uh, issue. Has it been a problem for you? If so, have you tried to address it in any other ways? Maybe it used to be and you fixed it somehow. If you fixed it some other way, would love to hear that. And other people would love to hear that as well. Or has it been a problem for you for a while and you're going to try to take care of it now after this video? Let me know in the comments. And if you genuinely liked this lesson, please hit that like button. It really helps out the video and the channel helps other students find videos like this to help their playing so they can keep growing and progressing and trying to work on expressing themselves with the music they want to play. I post a new lesson video every week. Yes, every week, even when I have COVID, like right now, 
Next week's lesson, I will be continuing my mini series on playing classical guitar without nails, kind of a niche topic, but I've been getting a lot of requests to continue that series. That's going to be fun. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing. Mm -hmm.